Oh no, Saints fans, not good news for your mob. They trailed by five to the Bombers at quarter time. Essendon by 24 at the half. And the Bombers have kicked eight of the last nine goals this game to lead by 45 points at three-quarter time. This, with after 15 minutes, two men down. No Saad can cast. No Goddard, a knee issue. Essendon dominating this one. Tip and Woody has got an equal career high. Four goals, and the Bombers lead it by 45 points. Triple M Bosch Tools stats sheet. Uh, Bosch Power Tools and Accessories. Good better, Bosch. Chewy. David Myers, number one ranked player in that third quarter for the game. 22 disposals, six clearances, and one major. Thank you. Bob Jane T Marts. Bob Jane T Marts, the time wheel specialist. you got Jay Z in the dock. Hello, Howard. Just watching Alan Richardson still addressing the players at this final change. Seems very measured, very positive, very controlled. No ranting and raving at this stage. Uh, in the Essendon camp, Kyle Hooker went through a fitness test throughout the, that interchange break. I'm not sure he's going to play much further part in this game, fellas. Essendon already down two men on the bench. Brennan Goddard and Adam Saad out for the night. And if Kyle Hooker can get back on the ground, maybe only deep forward. Not much more than that. He's got strapping on his right knee. Thanks, Jay-Z. And another bomber, Aracio Fantasia, has just gone down the rooms as well with Doc Reeds to keep an eye on that. Your Triple M Seabus Super Special Comments. Seabus Super with insurances to protect building and construction workers. You've got Juddy and Brownie. They might not have enough to get the full 18 out there the way they're going. I'm just getting a couple of things across my desk that potentially Fantasia has a little bit of a hamstring issue. So I don't want to step on anybody's toes down there. I'm sure Jay-Z would have got to it eventually, but we'll just watch that one with interest <laughs> as well. Are you trying to say Tom Brown might have snaffled that? Or? I'm just saying it, uh, it's come across my desk. All right. The doc will be on it, as will Jay-Z. They are the best combination in the business on a Friday night when they're here. Zach Merritt in the middle of Eddie Hatt Stadium, driving ball forward. It spills out the back towards Devin Smith, tries to get a handball on it. Brown to Smith, snaps it round the corner, it's too easy. It is too easy for the Bombers. They brought up the ton. Dev Smith enjoyed it. 103, St Kilda 52. So a 51 point lead. Now, Jay Z, just tell us. What's happening down there on the Bombers bench? How many have they got ready to roll? Yeah, you're right, Jody. Arazio Fantasia down the race with a, a hamstring issue. Had a lot of work on that left hamstring uh, during that three-quarter time break. And Kyle Hooker has just put the training top on and some ice around his right knee. So potentially Essendon don't have any fit players on the bench. Jay-Z, you're the journalist. So it's a 51-point margin. We saw uh, Carlton criticised last week for the fact they uh, went down to a team that had 16 out there by 100-plus points. This won't be a good story for the Saints. Yeah, they don't want to blow out here, Howie. I wouldn't be surprised to see them play very defensive. Uh, they don't want an 80, 90, 100-point loss to the Saints. Thank you, Jay-Z. And the doc down there for Bob Jane too much. Mitch Brown, they've got a real sniff of blood in the water at the moment. The Bombers, Langford. Bends it down to a dangerous spot just out from goal. Beautifully done, Stephen. Picked it up cleanly. Got it to Ross. Ross goes short to Jack Sinclair. Begs the question, Duke, if you are Alan Richardson, if you do sit numbers behind the ball and try and just defend, or if you say, no, I want to teach these players a lesson, get them to learn how the best players in the comp play and get them to fight it out. You wouldn't be putting a number behind the ball. No, I, I wouldn't either. The yeah. game's gone. You've got to take it on. You've got to, they've got to learn something. Yep. They're not going to learn anything by trying to save a game. Agreed. No. Fantasia, Jay-Z. Reckon he's done for the night, boys. He's not happy. Just emerged from the rooms looking very unhappy. So I think Orazio Fantasia done with a hamstring injury. And if that's a, uh, a tear there, a decent strain, that could be season over for Orazio Fantasia. So no Fantasia with a hamstring, no Goddard with a knee, no Saad with concussion as the ball goes out of bounds, and no Carl Hooker. What do we think the issue is with Hooker? Uh, it's his right knee. He had a fitness test at three-quarter time and uh, quite sore. His right kneecap, the doc says. So the Bombers will have no rotations in this final term, Jay-Z? Correct, Howie. Wow. Quite remarkable after we saw GWS in a similar situation last week. And Bell Chambers takes a big, strong mark, but I guess it does when you're leading it by 51 points. Doesn't really matter a great deal as far as the result goes. No, nah, not going to affect the result, Howie. The Bombers are nah, still alive just in season 2018. They play the Tigers on Friday night for you next week. McDonald's and Woody's been great, beautiful forward pressure, great presence. He's kicked four goals tonight. And they look a little lifeless, the Saints still there. Really just been outplayed, Collier. Just trying to play on around the mark. Umpire's just steering him back. This one's going to go back inside 50 for the Bombers. Oh. And 
Not his best kick, Travis Collier, early stages, final quarter, 103 to 52 on the Triple M Ream scoreboard. If your hot water needs replacing, accept nothing less than Australia's best and install a ream. Jody, what you don't want on Nate in this last term when you, you've got four extra men on the bench and the opposition is to go and get outscored in a final term, I wouldn't have thought if you're the Saints. No, I think that's a fair call, Ham. That'd be the plan. It must have been that early card, Nate. <laughs> Starting to catch up with you. As the Saints transition the ball alongside the wing, Hurley gets a fist on it, but I think Francis maybe getting a free kick. Someone is. It's been solid, Francis, since coming back in. He uses the ball really well. Got some nice poise about him. And you've got a push in the back from Rowan Marshall. It don't look like they want to change direction, Howard. They look like they're going to play slow and just stay up the line as much as possible, Essendon. Go down that way now, and it's a safe mark taken by McKenzie, who goes by hand to steal. Puts him over that run here, Seb Ross. Directing traffic as he goes, took a bounce. He wanted some movement. He got it, and he got a really good mark taken down there. It was Nunes, I think, who slipped forward. Check news. What's his night look like, Chuman? Only nine possessions, uh, Dars, and one behind. Only two kicks for the game. There's not a lot of involvement in an AFL game into the last quarter, Jack Nunes. Not spending as much time in the centre square as he was a couple of years ago, Duke. Seems to be playing a little bit more on the wing and even at half forward. His numbers are down. He's averaged 23 over the past three seasons. He's down to just 16 disposals a game in 2018. This is only his tenth of the night. Good-looking set shot for goal, Jack Nunes, and slots at home. Not a whole heap of applause around for St Kilda, it's fair to say. 58 yeah. plays, 103. The Bombers totally in control here in the last quarter on the Triple M Room scoreboard. He's back played by Steele off half-back, and it's something that the Saints haven't done a lot. They, they like to kick the footy by foot a lot from the back end, but Steele's handball to the run of Seb Ross just broke open the game. They were able to get past a couple of players in the zoning structure, and from there, the kick laterally was good enough to get inside 50. So Nunes gets the Saints' first goal since Loney kicked his second, two in the third term. What minute mark was that? Yeah, that goal uh, by Loney, uh, Howie, that was at the five-minute mark. Bit of a spell between drinks. Thank you, Chewy. St Kilda started the game well. They only trailed by five at quarter time, but it was 24 at the half, 45 at three-quarter time break. And they currently trail by a 45-point margin. One goal apiece this term. Smith for the Bombers and Nunes for the Saints, who send it inside 50 once again. Big fly from behind. Long. Oh, that was tasty. Yeah, it was a nice mark, wasn't it? it? had the sit, but what was more impressive and St Kilda fans, if you're going to take some positives out of it, Patton tonight has done a couple of nice things. He missed the kick on his opposite then with the left foot, but was perturbed by that, went back in, got it, and then set up this nice kick. He's done a couple of nice things, Patton. That was a nice hanger. And by Ben Long, the number 21, should kick the goal, and does kick the goal. So this is better from the Saints. Two in a row for the first time in the evening. And the Nationals... Margin is narrowed to 39 points, 15 and a half on the clock on the Triple M Ream scoreboard if your hot water needs replacing. Except nothing less than Australia's best. You need to install the Ream. It's obvious. Great leap by Long. He's quite a powerful player. And we mentioned before about Essendon playing slow and playing long down the line. If you sink Kilda and you know the opposition has no rotations left, you want to be doing the opposite. You want to be changing directions, running the ball by handballs and turning this game into as quick a style of game as you possibly can. That's going to be the best opportunity to take advantage of the lack of rotation as Essendon have. So plenty of time left in this game. 15 and a half minutes plus on the clock. Two in a row for the Saints. Can they mount an unlikely challenge here? Akers coughed it up. Going back in, Bailey Rice. Good strength in the contest. I like him as a player. They've got a good one there. Well played, Rowan Marshall. Fisted it forward. Loney. Long kick the last goal. Has he got a little trick up his sleeve here? Got the handball out to Gresham. He's got some tricks in the trick bag. Sends the handball back. Shot a goal around the body. And it's offline. That came from the first game of Ben Patton. Mark Bagley's down. Hands in. Head in his hands. How? What can you see there? Copped an elbow from Mitch Brown on the Triple M Chemist Warehouse replay. Right fair and square in his head. So hopefully he's okay because if 
he was concussed, which he's not. They'd be down to 17 men. He's got a bit of a blood nose. They are looking at it down on the bench. Blood rule takes on a whole new meaning when you've got nobody to run back on, Howie. It does, Judge. There's no Goddard with a knee, no Hooker with a knee, no Sard concussed, and no Fantasia with a slight hamstring. So they are you know, weary and sick bunch, the Bombers. So Bagley's going to stay out there. Well, he doesn't really have much choice. So they've cleared up that situation. And Hurley with a low drop punt, but it only goes as far as Rowan Marshall. They've got all the footy here at the moment, the Saints. Yep. He's done a couple of good things, Marshall, too. He's been involved in a, a few thrusts forward the last couple of minutes. Launches this long ball down, and that is a brilliant mark. Jack Billings, such a talent. He plays on, and it's been touched. Oh. Just, why would you do it? I think you're right. He's only 20 metres out, isn't he, Duke? Just don't need to do it. Please confirm. There's the score review, Juddy. It would only take a couple of seconds for the judge to sort this yeah, out. Yeah, no, that was touched. That was the right call. Triple M coach higher score review. And our man, the judge, it doesn't miss. Only needs a couple of seconds. Could it be back? We could be back playing now if they yep. just pump the line here into the Triple M commentary box on a Friday night. The umpire has uh, confirmed that he's a behind. Jack Millings takes a brilliant mark, Nate Brown, 20 metres out, plays on into traffic. Gets it smothered, gets it touched. That's the reaction from how bad his goal kicking's been. He's got yeah. no confidence with a set shot from 20 metres out, so he prefer to snap it. Or Tip and Woody shows a nice bit of speed. There's a slight fumble by Langford, so he had to not go to Smith. Now Collier also got some toe. He's going to have to wait up a bit here. He's called to play. Got a great deal up forward. It's a good ball inside 50, though. Gets away from McNeese. Nice hand pass to Tip and Woody. Nearly had his head ripped off. Up by says play on. Parrish arrives on the scene. Tip and Woody's got four. Equal career high. He'd love a fifth. And the Saints push it out. Now they've got a bit of space out the back through Loney. Over that run from Seb Ross. A lot of the footy for him too, man. 35. Now the Saints link up nicely. Billings going to send it down the one-on-one. -on -one. Gresham, hard play to defend. Connor McKenna's been good tonight. Fisted it away from Gresham. Boundary throwing right forward pocket. Deep in attack the Saints. Have a good play of the Irishman, Conor McKenna. Does his role really well. Good run and good dash. He's a good kick. Always amazes me, the Irish boys, uh, Juddy, how it's, well they play. Yeah, it's incredible. I think they've got to have a trick. Either they're really tall or, in McKenna's case, he's got electric speed. They need to have something that makes him special. Oh, good kick, seemingly. Yeah. I think because they don't learn bad habits, Howie. I mean, the, the bad kicks in the competition, they've got bad habits ingrained from such an early age that it's very hard to change. But you get a blank canvas with the Irishman. That's your Triple M Seba Super Special comments, the blank canvas. Chris Judd. Yes. And Nate Brown's hanging in there. They use straight arms when they kick, Howie. A lot straighter than what we do. Straight arms. And what does that do, Nate? It uh, alleviates any sort of poor ball drop. Good, Nate. Ball inside 50. Good mark running back with the flight, Mitch Brown. He's been one of the success stories out of a dark time for the Bombers. He was a top-up player. And he's played some really good footy for Essendon. In fact, he's played, I don't know how many matches he's played for him, Chewy will tell us in a moment, but he's been really good, Chew, since he came across from the Cats. What percentage, do you reckon, Juddy, can get better into the system when you come in as an AFL player and you've got your well-established kicking technique? How much better can you get as a player, percentage-wise? I, I think it depends if your technique's good or bad. So some players aren't great kicks, but their technique's all right, and they can improve a lot. But the players who aren't great kicks and have a bad technique, I think they they can only maybe get 10 to 15 percent better, in my opinion. Super super special comments. It's the Judd man, Nate Brown back there. Free kick for holding the ball goes the way of Bagley. And half back, taking a long time to he give has, the footy it? back, and Loney on the edge of a 50 metre penalty there. Got away with one. Essendon fans, you can hear what they thought about it. Stewie's just told me 15 games in five years for Mitch Brown at the Cats and now 36 games for the Bombers. Bagley Stewie. goes back to Zarakis, to Hurley, back to Zarakis, still inside the defensive zone, the Bombers. Well, the kick to McGrath wasn't great. Long, got a little fist in it, ended up in the arms of another Bomber who got it back to McGrath. Down the line, free kick. Essendon's way. 
Chewy, we need to look at the live ladder at some point. And you can tell us what this will mean for the Bombers. It'll help their percentage and who they play in the last couple. Uh, a few permutations, if you don't mind, when you get an opportunity. Collier marks 52 from home. Immediately gets back off the mark as Trav. Chipping ball is good. And it goes to Stringer. And he looks reasonably focused on the goals from 30 out, 6 metres inside the boundary. Essendon lead this one by 39 points with 11 and a half on the clock, Chewy. Yeah, so they've gained an extra couple of percent tonight. So best case scenario for the Bombers, how is to be one game and 5% outside of the eight, but they need quite a few results to go their way. Teams in the bottom half of the eight to lose games. Thanks, Chewy. We'll get their last two goals games yep. in a moment. Stringer, nine disposals, seven marks, two goals, one tonight. We go short. Goes to the tip, and he's picked it up. Tipper, he's kicked four. And this is for a career-high five. Was that a mark, M. Howard? Because I thought perhaps it bounced. <laughs> yes. Looked like a half volley. You did. might be right. Well done by Jake Stringer, though. Let's just check the Triple M Chemist Warehouse replay here. And... Oh, oh I, bounce. I, I don't think you'd give that out, would you? Oh. Sort of grabbed it just as the point of the ball touched, but it doesn't matter because it's tip. And he's lining up for a career-high five. Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody, fan favourite from 25 out. Five for Tip. Career high. And he might have a couple more before the night's out. Big smile on his dial. Well done. Essendon 109, St Kilda 66. And he's kicked five straight to the little man tonight. He's a beautiful set shot, isn't he? he Nothing is. often miss. I'm not sure if Gilly would have claimed it, but uh, Tipper did and he deserved his fifth. I thought it was good growth by Jake Stringer tonight. A, he gave off that shot. I think he's let up with the ball really well. He's had a reputation for just hanging back and trying to get that ball over the top a lot, which doesn't create space for the other forwards in that forward 50. He hasn't done that tonight. He's led well. He's tackled well. And see him give that goal off to Tipper Moody. Uh, I think he has to be really pleased with that sort of attitude from Jay Stringer. Get into Maccas for the mini Sharon footy. Just 5 95 with any purchase. Triple M rocking footy. As always, thanks to our friends at Maccas. Next two weeks for the Bombers. Richmond on a Friday night, and then round 23, they play, play Port Adelaide over there at the Adelaide Oval. Be a good one next Friday night for us, Dars. Yeah, looking forward to that. Geary sends the St. Stephen attack memory, launched at it. Good fist away. Back to Steele, back to Seb Ross, to the goal square. Big row Marshall's a chance here. Heard his arms chop. Surely his arms chop. And it will be Royal Marshall's free kick. It took a while, but your man, Nate Brown, is going to kick a goal here. Yeah, he continues to put himself in the right position to have a crack at it, Royal Marshall. I just like to fast forward maybe two seasons when he's got a couple of pre-seasons under his belt and he knows how to move a lot better. He's going to be a very good player. It's like one of those classic Ruckman pick up you get off the rookie list. He was playing down in Ballarat in the VFL. Kicked a couple of goals. A few weeks back against Carlton, and he's just got that look about him with Brownie that he could turn into a really solid 200 game ruckman. And Rowan Marshall makes no mistake, the Saints have got three goals this quarter. Margin back out now to, what was it, 28, uh, 30, 37. 37 points in favour of the Bombers. Thank you, two men, on the Triple M Ream scoreboard. Good finish there by Marshall. And he's one of those young players who you feel like you're finding something out as this game goes on. He's had a couple of really hard contests in the middle of the ground. Got some reward up there in the forward line with a goal. And like you say, Duke, he's developing into a very good player. And they'll be wanting to see continued improvement from him in the remainder of the season. Seb Ross, he's up to 38 disposals. His PB is 40 for Bosch Tours. Thanks, Chewie. What's the crowd? Yeah, 37,483. Pretty good crowd, Howie. Yeah, nice crowd. Uh, so I reckon position-wise off the rookie list, the Ruckman would have to be the number one. Yeah, it makes sense. Later developers, Howie, you can let them uh, apply their craft at the lower grades. Francis, really nice work defensively. A bit of a blind turn under pressure and used the ball well by foot. Give them a chance to grow and develop into their bodies. Judd Mann's uh, good mate, Big Cox. He's a prime example of that. Rookie-listed player was a bit of a late developer. Couldn't finish a 2K running the whole way, Howie, when he started. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. As someone who became, That's what we were dealing with. As what? someone who became one of the great aerobic big men, it's just an amazing story to understand that. He had his adenoids out, Duke, and that apparently he wasn't breathing properly when he slept, which uh, 
with holding the big fella back. Given the size of his cock, you would have thought there's a fair chance to... Uh, to uh, size of his nose. That's your conk. <laughs> That's how you breathe through there. You would have thought he would have had to get a bit of oxygen in, and, and he did. I'd played on him a number of times, Howie. He was very hard to keep up with. No doubt he was, Dars. As the ball cuts. <laughs> Jeez, I got a lot of lo- eyes shoot around at me in the box there. Baggily. <laughs> no, now I hear what you said. He's conk. As the ball goes inside, 50. Luckily, we've got a big nose producer who knows. All about <laughs> the big conk. Goes <laughs> across the boundary line. Still they keep it in though. The Bombers continue to push hard. They look to slide a little cheeky ball and it's good. And the mark is taken by Myers. He's a big kick of the footy and he'll need to be from 52. What was the general thought amongst the boys when he couldn't complete the 2K? Uh, I just think the general thought was, what are we wasting time with this big... Uh Big Blanc with a massive conk, as, uh, <laughs> right. as Duke put it. <laughs> okay. So Myers from 52 out. Nate Brown only just scraped home his first, uh, <laughs> first uh, four go. It's a, the old V4. James Cook beat me home, mate. <laughs> You're an explosive player, mate. Very explosive. Myers. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful finish by Dave Myers. He kicks his second. And the margin again goes out, 115 to 72 to 43 points. That's on your Triple M Ream scoreboard. If your hot water needs replacing, you accept nothing less than Australia's best and install the room. He's working his way into the votes at the moment, big David Myers. What are his numbers, Ash? Yeah, Brownie, 25 disposal, six clearances, but five of those out of the middle and throwing two majors. Yeah, nice work, Triple M Bosch tool stats. Good bit of Bosch. And the Bombers have done this, uh, Jay-Z and Dot all without the ability to rotate on the bench. Give us an update down there, please. Yeah, quick recap, uh, Duke. They've got no fit men on the bench. Of course, Serrazio Fantasia, hamstring concern. Uh, Brennan Goddard will have scans on his knee tomorrow, along with Kale Hooker. Uh, so that is uh, three of the four injuries. I can't really forget the other one, but uh, no fit men for the Bombers on the bench at the moment. Just lost one. <laughs> <laughs> have you got Tom Brown's number? <laughs> what did he say? I can't really forget Adam what Saad I did. got knocked out, uh, Jay-Z. Adam Saad just sitting in front of me, Duke. Uh, <laughs> concussed earlier, so he's the fourth player injured out, of course, for the Bombers. And in the meantime, Kyle Langman's kicked another goal for the Bombers. Alan Richardson just hangs his head into his hands. Can't believe it. 18-13, 121 Essendon, 10-12, 72 the Saints. On oh, the Triple M Room scoreboard. Another easy clearance out of the middle. It's been the, the pattern all night. They're playing a young Ruckman, but... Big uh, Tommy Bell Chambers has just dominated in that area as he should, being a seasoned professional. And their, their clearance has just been as good as you'll see tonight. So the interchange this quarter is uh, 20 to zip St Kilda's way, and the Bombers have outscored the Saints by four points in this term. It's amazing, isn't it, Chewy? In front of 37,483 people, it's back out to a 49 point margin. Get into Maccas for the mini share and footy, just five ninety five with any purchase. Bombers get another run next Friday night against the Tigers. Heppel, what's his night in tail? Chewy, the skipper. Twenty seven disposers. He's had a ripping year. Zaharakis, been around this club for a long time now. David Zaharakis, always remembered for that Anzac Day goal. One hundred and eighty four games. Twenty eight years of age now. Zaka. And the Bombers move the ball up the outer side along the wing. Spoiled out of the hands of Darcy Parrish. He manages to butter up and does nicely. See what, he covers the ground really well, Darcy Parrish. I'm not sure exactly what he's running. Time trial figures are, but I dare suggest he's an elite runner. He had a uh, spell in the VFL when he got injured down there, Judd Mann, and just coming back into the side now. A really good player. Pick five in the 2015 draft, Darcy Parrish. Broke his thumb, missed six weeks. Well, he is covering the ground beautifully tonight. So too is Myers. High ball to half forward. Bell Chambers outmarked by Lewis Pierce. Just his second game. He's struggled for opportunities. Billy Longer and Tom Hickey have most weeks played in front of him, but just taking a bit of a claim tonight. Have you seen his game too, man? Lewis Pierce. He's had uh, 17 disposals, Dars, along with uh, 27 hitouts to Bell Chambers with 24. Pretty good night. 17 disposals. As is this man, 
Seb Ross had plenty of the footy, Chewy, in game number 100. Yeah, as he 40. drives the ball along. Sorry, Chewy. Equal PB with 40 touches. All right, so he might beat that. He's had, as Nate said, an unbelievable last couple of months. The Saints still working hard. Jack Stephen, a little inside out torp along the ground to the goal square. Heppel under pressure, getting through his sink there. Can he throw a boot on it? He can, but he misses off the ground to the near side. One behind. Essendon 121, St Kilda 73. That's all in your Triple M Ream scoreboard. My boy, Zachy Merritt. Chua, what's he had? A yeah, leading ball winner for the Bombers with 33 touches. Still having coffees? Uh, we haven't had a coffee for quite a while, actually. Had a good patch, uh, your man, Jody. Had career high 41 disposals in his 100th game last week. He was super last week, wasn't he? Had another good year. I reckon he'll win a Brownlow, Juddy. Not that I'd know much. No, I think that's a fair, uh, fair summation. Collier's got it at half back for the Bombers. Try to get it back to McGrath. Big rap for Andy McGrath as a player to well, Devin Smith. Scotty Clayton did say Robert Murphy was going to win two. Okay. If he won a Brownlow, would you expect recognition in his speech? Oh, I would have thought so. Mm. <laughs> Donald Tipper. He's had a big night. Devin Smith down the line to Stringer. Off hands, boundary throwing. 4.14 on the clock. Left in this game, 121 to 73. All the Bombers way. Who did you say that to? The general uh, football just, club uh, No, the uh, the coaching staff at the Bulldogs at the time said that uh, this kid that we're getting down from Gippsland Power, Rob Murphy, uh, might be a funny-looking character, but he'll win a couple of brown lows. You obviously reminded him about that. Yeah, every day. <laughs> It'll be special to win too. Ball inside 50 for the Bombers. It's a big call. Snap round the corner is a really good looking finish, but it only falls to Webster. Yeah, you make a good point, Judge. He set that up nicely for you, didn't we? <laughs> Ross, he got two hand passes there in the space of uh, 10 seconds, Chewy, so he's now equal or, in fact, career high possession. Yeah, career high for Ross with uh, 40, what, two disposals. Saints have got it on the wing. David Armitage flicked a clever handball out, saw the best handball of the year. From Army earlier in the game. I don't want to see him kicking anymore, Duke. Uh, I think he's a handball specialist, uh, Judge. You need to go back and see it. We'll see if we can clip it up for you. Triple M footy. Send it out via our social media platform. It's just a beautiful handball, Howie. It was. One of my favourite moments of the night. Which platform would you clip it out on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> look. You put that on Insta, would you? Just uh... Uh, Maybe Snapchat. <laughs> Get a little snappy out there, Johnny. <laughs> Do you think someone's working back there in social media? Because I was in the office at 10 to 5 this afternoon at Triple M and the joint was an absolute... What is it? They'd just be driving it? into the office after Duke made that request. I reckon there'd be a team of social media specialists. No, he's not social media, our man back Isn't he? There. No, he's a, an actual Surely. producer. Well, he can multitask and get that out there for no, us. No, it's not his area. That's, uh, I'll tell you a story about the bloke that does that role in a moment. As the ball goes along the wing to Acres. Now Armitage. Now Jack Stephen. Let's hope it's not like his other story. <laughs> no, well, actually, I'm not going to tell you the story. I just hope it's quick. No, no, I'm on, not telling you the story. We'd love to hear uh, that one. Come on. Yeah, Ball don't, inside don't. 50. And an opportunity now for a shot on goal from Patton. We won't be able to finish this quarter. We've only got three minutes to go. <laughs> Rudy does social media. And I was in there during the week. And he invited everyone down to the pub on a Tuesday afternoon for lunch. And I said, well, why are you going to the pub on a Tuesday afternoon? He said, I'm celebrating because tomorrow I'm having a week off. That was why they were going down the pub. That's what type of show happens in there. <laughs> 45 <laughs> out directly it's interesting in interesting story start. And like an he a... snuck through. Nice finish like in a punch by line. Ben <laughs> Patton. His first <laughs> AFL goal, which is something to be remembered by. And let's talk about that. Like in a punch, like in a theme. Uh, Essendon 121. You start the middle of 79. Your Great finish by Patton on a tight angle. And I'll talk about him. He's on debut. He's had a tough night. He's had how many possessions, Chewy? Yeah, nine possessions. And he's taken a mark in the pocket while you clans are carrying on. That is a memory for the ages for that young man. From a tight angle from 45, wonderful finish. And there's the call, your triple up C-Bus Supers and your Bosch Tools. Just trying to clear the tumbleweeds out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Before that. Oh, uh, that really terrible. good stuff. Yeah, good, stuff. good goal for that young man. <laughs> uh, well done on debut. He's a talent. Benny Patton. Big moment here. Minute 54 remaining in this game. The Bombers keep their slim hopes of playing finals alive. Long jams this one. 4 to 50. And Mitch Brown back there 
takes a good defensive mark. Oh, I'm just not sure a week off constitutes a reason to go down the pub to celebrate, does. Nah. Glad you backed over there. <laughs> <laughs> ben McNeese goes short to Myers at half back. And we're winding down this game. 37,000 in the house, and the Bombers have been too good pretty much since half time. It's been all on their terms. Geary, the skipper, takes a mark and try and send it back again. Not the best kick you've seen for Jack Steele. McGrath. Now the Bombers move it up the wing. You know, if you're leaving the company, Darcy, I can understand it, but not to have a week off. Dev Smith takes a bounce. He's got Langford inside him. He's going to take a clever kick to get that way. It is. Falls to Langford. Spills off his arms. Goes to Stringer. Focused. Jakey Stringer focused. Hooks it round the corner. And missed the handball opportunities and the shot at goal. Essendon 122. St Kilda 79. A 43-point margin. On the Triple M Ream scoreboard with 47 seconds on the clock. Real mangy looking mouth guard Jake String has got at the moment. It's, I don't know if it's gold in colour or needs a wash. Jack Billings has got it at half back. Yeah, winding down to 33 seconds left in the game. Billings sends a long ball down the line. Michael Hurley and Tim Member have gone head to head, but uh, sliding and taking a good mark down there is Mitch Brown. Back to Hurley. His numbers, please, two men. Yeah, Hurley's had uh, 20 disposals and 13 marks. And Darce, Seb Ross, 43 touches. That's the most number of disposals by an individual player ever in an Essendon St Kilda class. Oh, Even geez. the great Rob Harvey didn't get 43 one day. Nope, spot on, uh, okay. Darce. Just sent him scrambling there, too, just to go back <laughs> and check. There's the siren. And the Bombers, too good tonight. 18-14, 122. The Saints, 11-13, 79. A bit of carnage on the bench, some injuries out of this for Essendon, but they won the day to kick off round 21. by five points a quarter time, 24 at the half, 45 at the three-quarter time break. In the end, St Kilda, 11-13-79, Essendon, 8-14-1-22. It was the Bombers running out winners by 43 points. Here's Dyson Heppel, courtesy of seven with Richo. At the moment, um, yeah, down to no rotations, uh, certainly hurt you, but I thought we played a, a pretty good brand of footy for majority of the night, so really pleasing result. Yeah, you were down two really early in the game, but it really does show your running ability of this team. You still had a lot more run than the Saints. Yeah, no doubt. Look, we'll uh, well, I guess you back our runners. We got, I think we got a good balance now of inside and outside players. So, um, yeah, you know, we managed to get through the game, no issue. You're still there, Dice. You're alive. Still alive and well at the moment. A um, couple of massive games coming up for us. So, look, we're just looking to improve each week, and I thought we took a step forward tonight. You must feel like your form is as good as anyone though at the moment. Yeah, I think so. Look, I think the last probably three months of footy showing we can match it with the best and um, yeah, we'll see what we can do for the rest of the year. A lot of players in good form, but we're just talking about how good's David Myers kicking at the moment. Yeah, he's got a good shoe on him. He's uh, you know he's a 70, 80 metre player and really improved his short kicking too. So a very valuable asset to us. Next Friday night looks pretty big now. Should be massive. Big turnout from the Bomber faithful. I hope at the G next week. So be huge. Oh, well done, Dice. Good stuff. Thanks, mate. Yeah, good kid, Dice Nepple, but no Goddard with a knee from the opening stanza. Side concussed in the first quarter now. Good to see him chatting with Nate Brown out there on the ground, the man that collected him. Hooker with a slight knee issue and, of course, Fantasia with a hamstring. So you think they'll have to have some changes before that game next Friday night, Chris Judd. Yeah, interesting to see just how serious those injuries are to Hooker and Fantasia. Uh, Hooker may have a bit of issue with the tribunal too. I'm not sure if he quite connected Nate Brown, but it's something that will certainly yeah. be looked at. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big week on the... Uh, on the MRI machine for the Essendon Football Club, Harry. Yes, it will be a big week on the MRI machine. It's here from the man to kick five straight. 
Uh, Anthony Tip and Woody. Before the game predicted you'd kick five tonight, you've, uh, you've done well, you've backed him up. Uh, thanks, Ian, that was good. Yeah, no, happy with the five goals. Uh, boys played really well and, um, yeah, it was good to get the win. Anthony, you based your game on pressure, obviously, and, and you got the rewards tonight on the scoreboard, but is that where you go into the game, delay tackles, put pressure on and see what happens from there? Yeah, I guess for me, um, I revolve my game on pressure and, um, and, yeah, if I put the pressure on and, you know, I can, I can just score in the end, so, um, yeah, I revolve my game on pressure and, um, yeah, it was good to kick five in the end, so pretty happy with that. That's a little bag, mate. You should be very happy with that. Your forward line, it's a, it's a dangerous mix down there at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a few um, players there. We've got uh, smalls and tall, so uh, we'll work really well. And um, Chuck came in the uh, second half, so um, played really well. And um, JQ played as well. So, um, yeah, and yeah, we're happy with the boys come in and play their role. And, yeah, it was good to get the win, as I said. Do you like playing in front of 80,000 on the MCG? Uh, yeah, I don't mind it. It's good. I think you'll have that next Friday night. Well done, Anthony. Uh, thanks, man. Cheers. Well done, Anthony Tip Woody, a career high five goals. Now, Doc White has wandered in, the number one medical operator on the planet, really, let's be honest. Uh, Doc, uh, Brendan Goddard, let's start uh, with the first injury. Yeah, we're a bit concerned about that, how we were. We when uh, he went down the roads, came up, Doc uh, was looking at the vision and he had that hyperextension injury. Now, uh, that does put the uh, anterior cruciate under a little bit of stress, but. Uh, According to Brendan himself, he said, uh, look, I'm pretty confident about this. The doctor said my knee was pretty stable. He was sore, and we know that the soreness in those sort of injuries is due to the bone impacting on bone, and that's what we call a bone bruise. That's what really hurts. It's not the ligament that hurts when it's damaged. It's the bone bruise. Now, the natural history of a bone bruise is that it's sore for a week or two. The knee generally swells up, and uh, look, uh, whether he has done any damage to his cruciate or not, which I suspect he's not, He's still very, very unlikely to play in the next week or two. So at best a test for next week, Brendan Goddard. And then Adam Saad collected by Nathan Brown in the first quarter. And he looked like he was out for a, a decent period of time. Yeah, right, Harry. And it's one of those, if you can call concussion a bad concussion, it's one of those bad ones. It was a double knock, so he got belted and uh, fell to the ground and hit his head for the second time. And uh, he lay motionless for a good 20 seconds until the training staff got out there. So that was a real decent concussion. He will not play next week. I think it would be extremely unlikely. Uh, Arazio Fantasia, slight hamstring. You imagine he'll struggle as well? Yeah, we just uh, saw that in three-quarter time. And, and Juddy got uh, the heads up. And uh, he was getting some work mid-belly, Chris, uh, yeah. in that left hamstring. Yeah, that's uh, what it looked like to me. And uh, went down to the rooms and came up a little bit despondent. So, look, I think it's a very, very mild strain. but uh, you got Maybe a fascial strain, Doc? No, unlikely to be a fascial. As you know, the fascials tend to hurt a bit. Okay. That sort of dr drifts into the tendon uh, sort of territory. Yeah. I think it's a mid-muscle uh, belly, maybe semi-membranosis or tendinosis. Sure. And then car hooker, Doc? Yeah, look, he had a little bit of soreness at the front of his knee and uh, was getting a bit of treatment, and uh, it's the uh, the kneecap, the patellofemoral joint. He came out with a lot of strapping, which was supposed to stabilise that, but uh, he looked pretty despondent. The doc said, no, you're not going on any further. It wasn't an actual incident. I think it was just some soreness he developed through the game. I think he should be OK for next week. That's good, Doc. What about our man, Juddy, who, after a couple of red wines, sticks needles into people or himself, just talks as if he's in exactly the same level as our man the doc who's studied for 35 years and treated everyone ever known to sport just self-taught how many some people you know teach themselves the doc went to a fancy university but you know i think we both have a mutual respect for each other's knowledge doc don't we we do uh, you, i think you went to the university of tibet school of hard knocks doc yeah what do you think about the judge uh, branching out to a bit of uh, dry nursing doc are you um, going to encourage people to come around and well, what are the risks associated with it well, there's uh, cross-infection, there's hepatitis B, there's uh, all the hepatitis C, all the blood-borne infections. I, I, were those needles clean, by the way? It's a risk getting up in the morning, Doc. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> you can, uh, you'd never do anything if you analysed all the risks too carefully. Yeah. Doc, let's not forget, Doc was a witness to the whole thing, and uh, my memory of it is he was very encouraging. Yeah, well, yeah. No, I, I was, uh, you sort of... Uh, really focused on the sort of the posterior, the gluteal regions. Posterior chain. Who's complaining of shoulder pain, I'm not sure what <laughs> It's all connected. You've heard the song, Doc. The knee bone's connected to the shin bone, and so it goes on. Get in the backers for the mini Sharon footy. That's, that's his <laughs> medical education, a little ditty. Just five ninety five with any purchase. Now, down there, Jay-Z. Yes, how are you all the Essendon boys? Very happy after the big win. Bit of carnage, as you said. Four players injured, but they've circled up and ready to belt out the song. The Essendon boys are very happy to get the chocolates uh, tonight. Standing behind the captain, of course, Dyson Heppel. 
Arms around his teammates, David Myers and Zach Merritt. Both very good. We might speak to Merritt uh, after the song. Aaron Francis in the middle of the song. Here they go. Save! Save! Well done to the Bombers, Jay-Z. will be looking for interviews, etc. down there. Today's Macca's moment does happen at the three-minute mark here in the second quarter. Here's how we caught it on Triple M footy. Saints are in good touch here. Akers, memory dives. Oh, almost could have been paid the mark. Cleverly slapped it back to Armitage. Oh. He went with a polypharma handle <laughs> to Gresham. 25 metre. That's the handball of the year, Howie. It is. It's the best handball <laughs> of 2018. I think the judge might have called that the Macca's moment at the time. Yep. Uh, Just felt right. It had that special feel to yeah. it, Duke. So uh, Macca's got that one right. It's a rare um, thing to see that. Uh, handball that length, that precise, uh, Howie. It was very, very well caught. We will get our social media team on to clipping that up. <laughs> right, we we'll... will get it out uh, on Snapchat, all, of our pla- all our platforms. Okay. It needs to uh, be It'd spread. It'd be great for Snapchat. I think the no, Triple no, 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 family no. will appreciate that. Yep. Uh, Bob Jane, team us, Jesse. Superstar midfielder Zach Merritt here with us. Zach, a bit of carnage on the bench. He did it tough in the last quarter with no re- no rotations. Be happy with the win uh, nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we'll uh, assess those injuries probably tomorrow, but uh, initially to get the win with uh, four four down in the last quarter is a super effort. BJ uh, and Adam in particular down early. Were you feeling the pinch late in the game? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, it was a pretty fast-paced game for both teams. Though. I think they were feeling the pinch as well, but... Um, luckily enough, we were for, uh, far enough ahead to uh, control the game. Hey, uh, Zach, congratulations. Uh, you've had a, a great fortnight. Career-high disposals last week, 41. Had a whole heap of the footy uh, again tonight. Almost like you just want this year to keep going and going. You had a few troubles earlier in the year, but you're, you're hitting uh, top form at the right time of the year. Yeah, I guess uh, it's just a learning curve every game, and uh, I'm just embracing that, that at the moment. And um, Obviously, numbers look good, but I think the process that I'm going towards uh, is making me a better player each week. The process involved catching up with our man up here, the, the Judd man. Are you still uh, in touch with uh, the two-time Brownlow medal winner? Yeah, I actually sent him a text during the week, so lucky enough he replied this time, which was good. But um, <laughs> no, I think we'll catch up soon if uh, he gives me some time, which is great. Zachy, we were talking about it. Mark Howard said you were certainly to win a Brownlow one day. We were just debating when in that Brownlow <laughs> speech would you thank me, do you think? <laughs> I would have thought it would be pretty early. Yeah, I think it'll be early. I'll give you all the credit. Yeah, beauty. That's what I was thinking. Hey, uh, I thought uh, your boy Stringer was really good up forward. I think his leading patterns are really starting to come along uh, as he's tackled pressure up in the forward half. How have you seen his development in the last 10 weeks or so? Yeah, spot on. I think, as you know, it takes a bit of time to get used to the way guys kick the ball and the way that guys, uh, and what kicks I guess they can get away with. So as Jakey spends more time up forward and trains more and more with us as mids, I think he's getting used to the the way that we do kick and uh, starting to learn what he can get away with and what he can't get away with, which is super. Hey, Zach, we appreciate your time. Congratulations to you on the Bombers tonight. Thanks, boys. Cheers. Nice to speak to Zach Merritt and uh, very humble, our man in the back row. How early are you going to mention me in your Brownlow's speech? He's gone with it. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy for him to knock his parents off first, and then I would have thought I'd be next in line, Howie. You don't think you'd be in front of the mum or the dad? Well, I wouldn't rule it out, no. <laughs> Send any emojis back this week, uh, Jaddy, with your correspondence? Yes, yeah, exactly. the emojis are fishing. Yeah, I like them. I don't like the emoji. Essendon run out winners by 43 points. Up next... Nate Brown will give his, his best summation of the game. He's full of pep and he's ready to go. McDonald's triple left rock footy. All over Eddie Hatch Stadium. Essendon five points a quarter time. 24 at the half. 45 at three quarter time. They run out winners by 43 points. Goddard with a knee. Fantasia with a hamstring. Hooker with a slight knee. And Saad concussed in the first term. So the Bombers had no players to rotate on the bench in the last quarter. They still won by 43 points. Tip and Woody kicked five straight. Chewy, uh, some Triple M Bosch tool stats briefly. Yeah, in that fourth quarter, 25 in the changes to the Saints, zero to the Bombers, and the Saints only won the quarter by two points. Seb Ross, 43 touches, PB for him. Well done, Chewy. Triple M Best on Ground Award. Thanks to Jess Amen. Get through to grey hair in five easy minutes. Visit jessamen.com.au to learn more, Judge. Uh, the one vote I've given to Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody. Good. Thought he was outstanding tonight. Elite tackle pressure and finished off with the five goals. Two votes I've given to David Myers. Mm. Mm. Kicked the ball beautifully. Yes. Had a big influence on the game, particularly after quarter time. Yep. And three votes I gave to little Zachy Merritt. 
mm. who uh, thought was outstanding. Some people will say... A bit of nepotism mm, in that. There's some nepotism in that, and that's the, the low-hanging fruit. And to those people, I'd say grow up. I thought he was terrific, got plenty of the ball, and had an enormous influence on the game. All right, well done to you all, Nate. You go home and have a good sleep. Brazzato tomorrow. We are that's on. That's it. We're on. Hey, what time, mate? Race two. Uh, race two, number six. At the headquarters. What are you going to be, boots tonight? Uh, you Horrific. don't wear them again. That's it. Well done to the boys in the back row. You've got Jace Tunners, everyone in the front row. Jay-Z and the Doc on fire. Leroy back in the studio. All over here. The Bombers run our winners by 43 points. Jay-Z locally with dead set. And the boys on the Saturday rub from midday. The Hawks take on the Cats. McDonald's, Triple M, Rocksbury.